All right, welcome back, everybody, to some of the discussions of nine, part four. We have a new, a new person in the uh, in the conversation. Jump right from our um, our live session at Midmoot. Yes, although right. I've so, so, hi, Brandon. Although I've been sniping at you from the comments for like weeks now. Yeah, so it's nice of you to join us. <laughs> anyway, so where were we? We um, are trying to transition into Act Two, and okay. uh, we were starting with uh, the relationship between Melkor and Nordenel. Mm -hmm. um, so it was suggested that by the hosts that Melkor would be very fawning and just praise everybody all the time for everything they did, mm -hmm. and tell them all how wonderful they are. So yep. okay. we would see some generic versions of that, of him just walking around the workshop being like, oh, wow, that's so great, to everybody. And then having a conversation with Nerdinel that makes it clear that they've spoken before, that they're very comfortable with each other. Um, he might have some advice for her instead of just the, oh, wow, that's great. Like, oh, but have you considered working with this material? You know, like something that's clearly an ongoing conversation between them that makes it clear that this right. is not a first deal. Right. Okay. Uh, and having seen how unfriendly Fan and Melkor are with each other, to see his wife being suddenly super friendly with the Vala is going to make the audience go, whoa, whoa what's going on here? Like, that's, right. it's going to get their attention. Right, right, right. So because of that, I don't think it's necessary well, to show we, her we, project we, being tied into him any more closely than that. So no, I don't want him, her to be making a bust of No, 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 not him. thinking that a, late, that a later project of it. Uh, I mean, at some point, but... <laughs> It doesn't seem terribly necessary. On the other hand, she probably does make statues of everyone she knows. I mean, mm -hmm. why wouldn't she, right? So right. there could be one of him somewhere in the mix. Yeah, I don't know if you want it. Oh, God. I mean, so you're saying maybe have, like, her rack of, of busts of, on it, on that shelf? We could have an opportunity for that at some point. I just didn't want it in this first scene between the two of them. I would want the conversation to show a familiarity. No, 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 something like that. Yeah, I wasn't thinking of that being in this scene. I was thinking. Okay. So we'll see if it works in later. I'm seeing it without, without Melkor being in it at all. I right, was thinking right. Of, but just, for instance, um, if that. Working on a, a bust of Melkor. And if Feanor ever saw that, he would be mad at her for it. So it would be an opportunity for her and Feanor to have a conversation about Melkor when Melkor's not there. So if we do need to get to that conversation at some point, we can use her project as a as a segue. But I right, we'll table that for now. Yeah, so, I, I only want yeah, to. I don't, it. Yeah, I don't know if we need to have that necessarily. I agree because because the thing is, when you have people make something on on a show it takes on significance. I think instantly people will think, oh, does she like him in some way? Well, that's what I'm worried about. Exactly. Yeah. We're dealing with that in this situation, no matter what. Right. Yes, yeah, we will get some of that. That cannot conceive a relationship between a male and a female. I know. It's not, it's not possible. Heck, no, I agree. I just, you know. Any two people, regardless of gender, without there being a sexual component in it, in somebody's mind. Yes. Well, but that's, but there's a difference between the writer and the man, the mind of your general audience. Because, yes, it is true that someone can take any two characters in a story and put them in a sexual situation together. And I do mean literally any two characters. And, like, Hermione Granger and Lucius Malfoy. Done. There well, are stories on no, the two of them. Well, for example... But but that's not the point. The point is, in the big do you write scenes in, the, in which... Yeah, no, I, I understand. But, the, you know, like um, Big Bang Theory, which we talked about in the last episode as well, there, like, a lot of the level of sexual tension between Penny and Sheldon, which is clearly like she did that since then but that was clearly not the intent in the show no. I think somewhere like a season or two ago they, they kind of poked at it a little bit oh. 
but that well, was well and i would say yes there's always going to be something but there's a difference between your fans building a ship so to speak to use mm -hmm. the fanfic term and the show like building the ship and we have to be careful right. in that circum in some circumstances to not right. like build the ship ourselves and be like no there's no ship I'm just, saying, just ignore yeah. the big ship we put in this harbor i'm just saying that showing up by showing up between a male character and a female character against the wishes of right the husband. Sid, yeah. or male yes, that, character that, that, that. that the female character's husband does it's not like to appear to be a sexual component to their relationship. Yes. Yes. That's yes. Yeah. But I feel like most cases where that's happening, the the writing has created a triangle of some sort. And we are trying to create a nerd and supports Melkor fan or hates Melkor. So they're going to argue about Melkor. Like there is going to be a triangle there. So yes, yes from that so point of view, we can't avoid it. But yeah. at the other hand, it's not to the point where Nerdanelle is going to be defending her time spent with Melkor, it's not right. going to get to that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, Feanor's not going to accuse her of sneaking off with Melkor. Like, that's not going to no, be no, the no, language. No. Yeah. So yeah. It's, be, it's what they fight over. Yes, I'm, I'm, just that, I'm just saying that avoiding, it's the, like, trying to avoid going to conjure up, like, we're already, we're already there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think one thing we need, I think one thing we could do is maybe stab have her, instead of just making a Melkor bust necessarily, like she could be, she might be adding it to her collection of other Valar busts. Well, yeah. Yes. Yes. I, that I, okay. yeah. I think. And, and that would have a point would, because would be it would show to do. Nerdanel's yeah. relationship with the Valar being fairly positive at this point in the story. Yes, and that would be yeah. a pos that would be part of her character element versus Feanor's, where Feanor has been getting more and more anti-Valar throughout his whole yes. life. So, yeah. if okay. she has if she has a set of Valar statues and just adds Melkor as the newest one, then I feel better with what that says. Yes. Yes. Okay. But we'll get to that when we get to her. We can actually even point that out when when it might even kind of challenge her on the idea of her making a bus of a Melkor, and she says, "I just wore my collection. He's one of the Valor, right?" And <laughs> yeah. collect them all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it could be even like a "Hey, he's been reinstated" type thing. So I figured I'd add him to this group that I already have. Right. That that I like. I, I feel it, it said something about her acceptance of him, but... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So the two of them talk in the workshop, and we see that they're friends, and at that point, does Melkor ask what Feanor's working on? They could say something to the effect of... You know, for in a, in a while, you know what what's he been what's he been up to? And, and she, you know, he's been working on this pro new project. She's not concerned about it at this point, right? Well, well, we'll we'll get to that in a little bit. But right now, she doesn't seem at all concerned. Melkor, she just says that he's working on this new project. It involves light, and Melkor says, "Oh, wow." A great medium to work with. You can suggest Y and Z technique. I, I don't. I don't know. Have any idea what we have to suggest? <laughs> um, you can have him. You can suggest blah 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 blah. I'm sure that he'd really appreciate that because she doesn't know that Fanor hasn't bothered to tell her this yet. Right. So, so will more than it's it's about light. Will she say it's about the light of the trees? 
because we, I mean, we have to build up to that, that Feyenoord is working on a project to capture the light of the trees, but who's going right. to reveal that and when does that show up in the story? I, I, I would say that we don't have to, we don't have to, she doesn't have to say the light of the tree. Um, okay, because so it's, just, it's a project about life. Right. Okay. And so it has yeah. to do with light, and so um, so he makes some suggestions which she will feign or maybe an act of lead. If that makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to build up to it so the audience is also curious what Feyenoord is working on. Um, yeah. I like yeah. the idea okay. of um, light as a medium to work in. Like, I like saying it that way. Like, as if, like, it's steel or, like, yeah. like metal. Like, you know, stuff that, it's like, we, we, these days, we can't, like, work in light. Light is just a thing. You either contain it or you don't. <laughs> yeah, well, so I like that. You know, you, you, know you can work in light because oh, and we have, we even have, you know, crude holographic technology. So That's true. We are getting so to that point. We kind of do. But, um, but this is a little bit more than that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we're not going to show fan or inventing a light bulb. So no. yes. we're not going to necessarily show the steps in this progress. Of right. Fact, working with light. Melkor could suggest what Melkor suggests might could be interpreted as using electrical current. Mm. Ah, well, in that case, um, my suggestion would be tungsten is what he needs, needs to mention mm. because tung tungsten is the element that they use to make the filament of a light bulb. And uh, so it has good properties for that. You can also use a strip of cotton cloth, uh, which is what Thomas Edison had to use because he couldn't uh, make tungsten into a thin enough filament for his project. Right. So he had to he had to use cotton. You know, so you can do it with other other materials. Yeah. As well. And then the other valor will come along, and they'll invent LED lights, and then we won't need any of this incandescent stuff anymore. Right, which is of course what the host specifically told us to right. Avoid. Yeah, we're not doing but that. I feel well, well, like I, I think that what that having no of course suggest a purely scientific uh, method fit. Yeah, that's not what Feyenoord is doing. And if we the, okay, I guess the problem with using a word like tungsten is that it's very clearly uh, our name for an element. Whereas you know, if you if you use words like silver, gold, no one thinks of it as. Anachronistic, but if you use tungsten, people might consider that anachronistic. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, you um, might say something to the effect of there are materials that you can use. Yeah, he might, he might say, is he using fibers or has he moved on to metals yet? And it's for his <laughs> filaments. <That's laughs> like, right. If we're going to go with the incandescent light bulb analogy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that word, but yeah. <laughs> But yeah. having him ask a question like that, like, oh, so what metal is what metal is he using? It would, like, it would be kind of fun. It would be kind of fun to have like, and you know, people who actually understand how a light bulb works, say they're going, oh, oh, it's kind of awesome if if you could do that without the general audience, without it with being. This, and today. necessary interpretation of his words. Right. right. So if whatever he says could have a general broad scope, but also happens to match something very specific, that's yeah. that's kind of fun. And but I that think, that'll be specific script writing. Yeah. And I think uh, I think the thing one thing that's important is to have Melkor mention something that's more naturalistic than what Feynor goes with. Like mm -hmm. that's more of 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 uh, of of Aya, so to speak, like of the world, because of course, what is what is Melkor's ring? If you you know look at the title of that particular history of Middle Earth volume, Melkor's ring is Arda. It's mm -hmm. the fact it's it's he puts his power in into material into stuff. Middle Earth basically, and he uses it to dominate things. Mm -hmm. And that would so of course he's going to like look at like at that point like oh he's working with this. Well, what about these things? What about, you know, so is he doing something natural like I would? 
of the, the powers of Morgoth is what you're saying. Right. Right. And like, yeah, it, it's not necessarily to even make that connection, but to like say, hey, he, he thinks he thinks of Aya first and of the earth and like of what you do with it um, yeah. before he would think of like grabbing the light from the two trees in some more ethereal way like Feanor. Yes. Yes. I, I agree that, that, right. that making him so, be more earthy is, is a good and literal and materialist is the right note to hit with him. Yeah. Okay. So in this act, in this, um, is there another scene that we can stick in there before we see talking to the elves about the greater lands on the other story because I feel like we need to get there we do need to get there yeah. um, okay we can cut to Aroma and Caligorm hunting and bring up the conversation there because that's really the best place for it yeah. you can see later Melkor ingratiating himself into conversations in Tyrion. But, but again, the point is to show that that was something the Noldor were talking about without Melkor there. Right. right. And, the, and the conversation with Arome is pretty innocent because Kelgorm's just asking him questions about what's Middle-earth like. Tell me about the forests of Middle-earth. What animals do they have there? Are they the same as the ones here? Do they have, you know, and Orme starts yeah. telling him about the different biomes and how like there's different types of forests in Middle-earth and if you travel far to the north, it's like this, and far to the south, it's like that, and... Yeah. Yeah. Like, Arome is just going to wax poetic about the forests of Middle-earth, because he loves the forests of Middle-earth. Yeah. And Huynh will be there, and it'll be great. All right, so... We'll go back to Tyrion and see Melkor talking to... Who's... That is Galadriel, little Galadriel present. Oh. Oh, right. Um, I think that Galadriel will be present for one of Melkor's conversations in the next episode. I think she's a little young right now to have her have an opinion one way or the other. Yeah, I think that's okay. probably... Her only role in this episode was to tell off Faye in the beginning, and so she could show up in a later scene as a minor character in the background, but she's not going to do anything. Right, no, I'm not, right, no, I'm not saying she's saying it, anything. I'm just facing but even, around there. I mean, it's true. She grew up with Melkor there her whole life. Like, she's young enough that this is normal for her, and Melkor's just as much a Vala as any of the other Valar right. to her. And you can even make the case that her it being so difficult for her to get to the point where she would be allowed back to balance could have something to do with the with the effect of with milk yeah but again i want to see that or. i, I want to see that affecting her as an adult because i want her to be making those choices i i i don't want to imply that she was brainwashed you know, uh, my yeah, brainwashed from a young age or anything. Like, I don't want any implication yeah. that he twisted the mind of a 10-year-old. Because that, I mean, he totally would, but it kind of makes her look like a, a puppet instead of mm. someone making okay. a choice. Yeah, especially so. because when you corrupt a young child in a story, that has lasting impacts on that child, typically. You know, otherwise, why do it? Yeah, like, Maglin's going to turn out to be Maglin for a reason. Yeah, but we've already shown Galadriel to be her own person. Right. She's really just Again, buying it wouldn't everything. Again, anything if she were there. I just, I'm not comfortable with all the implications, and I would prefer to keep yeah. her interactions okay. with Malcor to the next episode. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, but we do want to see her, but we do want to see him saying these things. We have him saying them to them. Well, remember that his conversations next episode will be about men and how you got kicked out of Middle-earth to make room for these men. So this episode, he's just going to talk about how Middle-earth is really large and actually quite scary. There's a lot of things there that they don't have here in Valinor. And, and it could be taken 
in different ways because he's not talking against the Valar. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he knows better. But he's he's implying a lot of things that they can take away from what he's saying. He Well, he might even be like kind of Valar position that, oh yeah, it's it's super dangerous over there. Right, well, because he has to talk about yeah, the danger so that they make open sense. Open forests, and, right, right. But, and monsters, really scary monsters left over from that war. He's actually making, <laughs> but, but in his description, he's not necessarily saying that the Valor were right to bring them here. And But his description is awesome. You know, like, yeah. they yeah. talk about you know, broad, broad sweeping plains and great yes, yes, rushing <laughs> streams. He's yes. getting them all fired up, and right. it should seem a little different than what we just heard Arome say. Yes. So we should be able to contrast that. But he, but he's still, he's not necessarily coaching them into rebellion against the Valar. No. Simply saying all these things as a warning. But he does make it sound kind of awesome. It, it yeah. It, it should it should kind of be implied as he's going on, like, oh, but it's very dangerous, and you know, only you know, just yeah, we wouldn't want to risk anything, and it's good that you're all here. But at the same time, being like, but you guys are actually, you're, you know, these elves are, you guys are much stronger than I thought you would be, and you know, wow, you're really brave, and yeah, yeah, he can talk them up after having talked about how dangerous Middle Earth is in a way that yes. you could totally take it. <laughs> and, um, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, for example, I know full well that Middle Earth is a very dangerous place. I still kind of want to go. I still want to, I want to go there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't, yeah. It doesn't matter what my survival chances are. <laughs> right, yeah, I would, I would rather, I would rather, more than work. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I. Uh... So it could be something like that. It could awaken, like Bill. Bill, Bill the awaken is awaken him and has awakened the desire to travel to faraway land and then carry a stick. That's the kind and, of thing. And the emphasis needs to be that the generation that he's talking to, the younger generation has never been there. Because the older generation made the journey. They, they remember Middle Earth, and you know they chose Valinor. Yes. So yes. even though they might miss it, they still made that choice themselves. The people who were born in Valinor feel the choice was made for them. They don't know what they gave up, and it's yeah. a lot more conflicting. Right. Yeah. Which, in the frame, I guess we can have Arwen also figuring out that she doesn't know what Valinor really is. Mm-hmm. So yeah. She doesn't know yeah. what the choice is. So yeah. this might be the mirror of Galadriel. Episode. episode in the frame. Mm, mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. If we haven't done it yet, it would be here. Just, yeah. just saying. Yeah, it's a good place for that. Um, All right. I, Take a break real quick before I, um, before I wind up um, tearing my hair. <laughs> so, if you're watching this live, um, if you're watching this on YouTube in the future, definitely like and subscribe. Oh, sure. I can want to share them. Yeah. And comment down below if we're getting this all wrong. And if you haven't yet, feel free to subscribe so you get more of this stuff. Anyway, we'll see you in a bit.